if Respawn is doing anything right, it has always been their single-player stories. Actually, Respawn kinda has never missed, even going all the way back to the Modern Warfare 2 days. Since they left Infinity Ward, it's really been banger after banger, even with a pretty cool VR Medal of Honor game. Do we give the handling of Apex lately a pass? I'm more prone to blame EA more so than them, as we all saw the way EA wanted to launch Survivor Undercooked as to avoid release competition, and that's how we ended up with the abysmal launch. With all that said, I love Fallen Order so much. Hearing this theme brings me a Jedi's peace. We got BD's eyes and what looks to be the golden ratio. Ironic as the golden ratio is a mathematical principle being associated with religion in some cases and the Jedi Order is now a dead religion. Even more ironic that it frames EA, the publisher furthest away from releasing anything golden nowadays. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop roasting them for now. Does anyone else miss when it was called LucasArts? It's like every day a bit of my childhood is being washed away. Is that what growing up is truly about? All right, this is a little egregious for displaying the differences between these settings. It's like those stupid gaming advertisements you'll see on monitors and it's not great. But dumbing it down to the lowest common denominator is sometimes a necessity when you think about my pops at 51 trying to understand what resolution and FPS means in his laser sword game. The next generation of Jedi. Okay, this intro is really freaking cool, having us start exactly where the last game left off. And all of Cal's previous adventure is shown through the shards of the holocron, the item that is the very reason that all the events of the previous game happened. Just some wonderful symbolism right at the start. Reminds us that Respawn really does care about this story. This is no common anarchist, but a devotee. Oh, I really love Trilla. Her voice actor is badass, and you know I love that purple eyeshadow. I was alone for a long time. I love that frame. To really hammer home is isolation. In a galaxy spanning planets and solar systems with all sorts of different races, crazy to imagine the thought of being so alone. I know what it's like to lose everything. To feel so desperately, you're right. Yet to fail nonetheless, right? Night Sisters and Jedi do not travel together, but survivors. We adapt. The theme of being alone, letting people in again from the first game perfectly transitions into the survivor theme. What happens and how does a group like this survive together? New world. Execute for the 66. Where's a Jedi Purge game? Where's a Vader series of him during the Purge? Why has Disney avoided the Purge years so harshly? There is gold in the Star Wars. Also, I'd be a fake fan if I didn't win E. McDermott saying our three favorite words. You can't stop the Empire! I'm stronger now because of the pain. God, I love that we watch Kyle fall. I fall to the dark side while hearing all the different views of those that have already done so. Failure is not the end is a necessary part of the path. The path, something we're gonna hear over and over again throughout Survivor and is one of the sub-themes of this game. After we've got Cal falling with the dark side, once we see his master's blade ignite, we get all the light side things we went through. Made better that it was the reforging of T'Pol's blade that made him see clearly again. The Jedi Temple being our main menu is totally suspect and a tease to be honest, but gets us asking questions and makes us excited to jump into the game. Also fitting because, you know, we start on Coruscant. What are we, taking a page out of God of War with our main menu transitions into the game? I never noticed Cal's tattoo in the first game, and I subscribe to the idea that it's an identification number tattooed on him from his time on Baraka. To me, it's a bit allegorical to tattoos Jewish people had to endure during the Holocaust, which Cal being a Jedi and the Empire and all of that, you see my point. Plus he's cuffed now, being taken in with some good attention drawn to it. We know Cal has seen some stuff now because boy is stubble. Thank God for that, because I would have no idea otherwise. Cal looks out to Coruscant, to freedom, and then looks at the box that's gonna get him there. Also, it's Bo that he trusted to hold his saber for him, which in retrospect is bittersweet. Aw, oh, he didn't have to look, just sensed the temple. Getting those Kevin Kenner from Shattered Blade Runner vibes as we enter the uncertainty of the Undercity. Even Coruscant has its version of Skid Row, which makes me wonder why the heck is a Jedi being taken to such a shifty place and not either killed on the spot or made an example of? Mm -hmm. oh! Man, really trying to sell this capture to the boys in white? Also, Bode probably got off on that a bit anyways. You know I had to try. Sometimes I like to pull a donkey and just try and break a game. Isn't that hard with this one, I'll say. I don't like it. Stick with the plan. We'll be fine. As long as I get paid. Some really efficient dialogue, fitting for both before and after the review. We're citizens! You can't treat us like this! Yeah? <laughs> Took my line straight from me, Scout Trooper 42069. Well, it was expensive. Someone's gotta pay for it. 100%. Taxpayers. Right? 
Actually, don't know. I just like the low-hanging fruit jokes. Man, is the scale of Coruscant and really Jedi Survivor so grand sometimes. I catch myself often just panning the camera, taking in the view. Bet that box is coated in lead so the droid doesn't see what's inside. Get over here, Jedi. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> jump scare from the toughest enemy in the game off the rip. Seriously, these motherfuckers weren't traditionally hard to take down, but they would wear heavily on my stims to make the rest of the encounter difficult as hell. Looking at you, Imperial Post 8L005. The rest of you will stay here. Uh, that wasn't the deal. Deals change. I am altering the deal. Terrorist. You gonna let him call you that? When the Senator gets a hold of you, you'll wish you were dead. Always nice to meet a fan. Damn, has Cal gone from plucky adventure to sexy lead, especially with the way I've got him dressed by the end? Oh. This way, Jedi. <laughs> I love how K2SO has been the model for these security droids. Oh nice, looks like homie Grand Inquisitor and Crimson Chin had a baby. Speaking of baby, oh baby the music. We know exactly what it is before they even show us. Yo, though, check out the Chelsea's on the Senator. Sabotaging weapons depots. Disrupting supply lines. So we cut supply lines, we steal contraband. You will lead me to the remaining Jedi. I can't. It's just me. Love how this feels altruistic at first, but it's actually a sad truth of the moment. And to think one day our children will ask, what is this? Thing. Set up for Cal to be a badass later. Drawing on my new favorite horror movie trope of just putting things in the background without proper attention given to it to make us just go, Oh my god, I see that guy! Of a corrupt institution destroyed by its own arrogance. It's where the AAA industry is headed if publishers aren't careful. Too big to fail is a farce. Arrogance is a trap a lot of us fall into, Senator. That's when the other shoe dropped for all of us being like, Oh, he's about to be cool. That's mine. Yes, 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 Respawn did exactly what I hoped they would do with the intro of this game. More on that in a second. We just learned three core mechanics in less than five seconds. Hit it, BD. <laughs> wow, Crypto's drone being useful for once. Now he comes to us. Uh, he's coming a little hot. Destroyed by its own arrogance. Not to be outdone by Nathan Drake, we've got the nice off-white rolled sleeves and an explosive set piece that we've got to dangerously climb our way out of. Uh, yes, we keep our fast climbing. No, Cal was locked into prison and lost all his gear in some connection to the forest bullshit. Respawn perfectly was able to have Cal keep everything we learned from the first game without overwhelming new players of all the things he can do now. Aw, yes, in natural Star Wars fashion, stormtroopers can't a oh, jeez. Well, you know what Obi-Wan said. They are intentionally missing Cal here to purposely hit this beam to drop him into a trap. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the first set we find is called Patience. You see where I'm going with that? Wanna get a bite after a shift? Sure, I can go for a turbo dog. <sighs> Why, Respawn gotta make me feel bad for the grunts. They're probably just conscripts looking for some pay to scrape by. And we're gonna come down and murder the heck out of them. Maybe I am a terrorist. <laughs> I'm my biggest enemy of Jedi Survivor is born. I didn't think it was possible. Respawn managed to make Cal run even goofier in this game and I love it. fake out that we all saw coming but points for trying what took you so long oh you know just hanging out cal has achieved comedy ah the dark souls influences keep their mark here more so than they do even in their own games okay that's a little bit dramatic but i still love the interconnected level design that survivor spirits god is cal's lightsaber flourishes as beautiful as ever whoever is animating on the respawn team deserves a kiss on the forehead Mwah. remind me to tell you about the karita job sometime we're gonna hear this comment all the time between different characters and it does some work on building the world around them even if it does get tiresome that jetpack's handy remind me to tell you how i got it sometime see what i mean gainers are some of the scariest flips to learn don't believe me? Go try some out on the trampoline and come back. Moving force slow to Cal's super is nice and even more in line with how he first used it as a Padawan. Even better as I believe it's still a dark side ability and Cal really isn't about that life just yet. Sad is gone for puzzling though. Do you see that? It was quick, but we've got dismemberment. I've yet to see a head come off, but I'm happy seeing the Star Wars classic of arms coming off return. <laughs> You can really feel the difference between the old double saber and this one. Each of the stances have a more defined role in Survivor that I'll talk more about as we get them. Well.
No matter what anyone says about the story, gameplay, or performance, moments like these are what games are all about. Just feeling like a badass. The Emperor turned the Jedi Temple into his palace. Ironic. Yeah, that's what the Empire does best. Take something you love and make it something you can't stand the sight of anymore. Are you sure about that? When Darth Vader showed up and beat my ass for a good half hour, I had the biggest smile on my face the entire time. Yes! Revenge! So I heard you fought the Empire on Kashyyyk. Noshir Dalal was such a good addition to the cast here. I recognize his voice instantly, and with his resume, I'm surprised I didn't see it coming that he was going to be our big bad after Dagon. You don't just get Noshir Dalal for a sidekick. I mean, you do, Katalo, but you feel me. I hijacked a walker and broke open an Imperial prison camp single-handed. <laughs> That one was BD. You better put some respect on BD's name. And I get it even more now, guys. I recently got a kitten in December and I constantly see BD doing things that remind me of my little sesame. Here she is being dumb. That one was BD. <laughs> and in classic BD fashion, we understand what they're saying most of the time. I can just hear them going, that's right. You've been through a lot for someone so young. Just trying to survive. Ooh, he said the title. Sounds like he wants to double my cut. That right, BD? <laughs> God, I love BD. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention how good the switcheroo was to have all of our captors be wolves in sheep's clothing. I just bet the twins of the Senator had you in there stuffed and mounted. Hey, I want to cut at that. <laughs> Goes to show the rapport with his crew and also that Cal did technically help win the bet, so of course he should get a cut. Plus he's the captain, so like he kind of gets a cut of everyone's profits. Sorry, Gabs, not mine to get. Respawn really keeps us on the hook for as long as possible about where our Fallen Order crew is at. They make it seem like Grease is just waiting on the ship for us, but really it is just Cal being the best guy ever. Bo checking his corners. Sorry, I left you hanging on the left though. Unlock it and you'll be rewarded. I'll be rewarded. It was kind of like one of the last things we've yet to do as Cal's a force user, other than lightning and heal, but I'm gonna act like one of those don't exist. They're everywhere. Or 10 year old me looking at my acne. Someday when your children see this, They'll know the Jedi never stopped fighting for them. Reverse Uno card callback. Plus the first time that we truly hear Cal's theme in game. I bet this senator has more credits. Than Damn, did they catch me off guard with this one. Good one, Respawn. Oh gosh, which one is it this time? Oh, who's that? Castus! Oh, the ninth sister. Sorry, didn't recognize you because of the arm. <laughs> they really are just rogue wanting all of Cal's crew right now. This is the goofiest looking thing ever, but I'm here for it. With this, the dash and grapple hook traversal still wasn't my favorite part of the game, but it's leaps and bounds better than the first. I couldn't be the only one that constantly swapped their stances because pretty animation make Bringo happy. That'll prove useful. I am in love. They want me. They got me. Yeah, no looter narrative distance on what Cal's capable of. I know I could take these guys on, and so does he. Huh. Cal learning from not just Seer, but also Trilla. Hence why I really wish last game, and especially this game, that he fully embraced the Grey Jedi aspect of himself. And just a straight recreation of the scene down to the blaster shooting at him. I don't care who does it. I don't care how it's presented. The helicopter blades will always be goofy as hell, but I can appreciate them just putting a little second in there for us. Finally, where this game really shines, it's 1v1 battles always make for the most intense encounters. Parallels the first game too, having us fight an Inquisitor, but this time we actually stand a chance. Mmm, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> That's what I was talking about, how Respawn did the tutorial. They took all the core abilities that Cal had from the first one and just slowly introduced them over an hour, exactly when we needed to use them in game. It made for such a natural way to teach us. And Dual Stance is, hands down, the best one. You know it, I know it. Being able to parry at the drop of a Ninth Sister's head really makes the game so much more enjoyable. <laughs> Masana! Ooh, using her real name to try and connect with her. It's time to set you free. <laughs> Cal took the American approach to freedom, I see. The Ninth Sister might have felt a little easy for taking on an Inquisitor, but we've already dumped on her ass once, and we've gone through a whole character arc, so she really never stood a chance to begin with. For a moment, you can see our Kit Fisto bounty hunter up there. Also, the only picture they have of Cal's from whenever he's found on Baraka. Our man's been doing good for himself, not getting caught, it seems. Oh, this has been a great first date and all, but I still haven't gotten paid. Tinder dates when you haven't said you'll pick up the tab. May the force be with you. You're a great fighter, Cal. Let's see how well you fly. <laughs> Peep that beat before he doesn't say it back. A good twist recontextualizes every moment, like this one. Seeing him struggle for a moment with his past. 
You might recognize these horns. It's an homage to John Williams' Battle of Coruscant. Since, where, well, yeah, I know, I'm about to do some space battles over it. Once again, goes to show the massive amount of respect and love Respawn had for the source material. Well, it's as we hoped. This book is a copy from the Jedi Archive. Setting up Seer's desire to rebuild it. And whisper what I have learned to my sleeping sisters. They were not invited. Oh, poor BD. Well, what do you think? No. It's good. Could use some more salt. Reese? Under salting something? Are you sure about that? Ooh, gals in love. If anyone knows how to fix up the mantis, it's Grease Dritus. Thank you, Respawn, for not playing the pronoun game until we reached Monkobo. Oh, my heart. We've got more BD customization. For that alone, I think I might be able to get over the performance issues. Might. And all the colors from the rip. Thank you, Respawn. Thank you. What is that? I guess we finally get to see Grease's cantina. It's so calm. Bravo would have liked this. Straight up, though, the opening of Survivor was kind of an onslaught in the best way possible. Everything about the map is diegetic and makes for a more immersive experience. We could place markers this time around, but only if we can see it with our BD binos. Secure the ship. Those are the orders. Oh, yes, baby. Respawn managed to find a perfect way to incorporate everyone's favorite arrow into Survivor. The Clone Wars did such heavy lifting for the arrow, and I'm glad they stuck with Matthew Wood for the B1 droids and kept their silly voice and mannerisms from the Clone Wars. Granted, since their inception in Phantom Menace, they had continually gotten higher pitched and goofier. Thanks, BD, for the light. Walking around holding the saber was a cool vibe, but boring! Take a look at that view! Is that a giant crater? Wow! I got it so easy. Guard the cliff, crush the locals, look at the scenery! You can't tell me you didn't stop just to listen to the droids talk every chance you got either, right? The main incentive to explore around is for... Cosmetics. That's it. No stat increases, no additional gear, just looking sharp. Though I like to think the industry is getting better about microtransactions and such, it's still great to see Respawn kicking the trend with Survivor just purely being about cow's drip. And giving us workbenches all over just to change things around. It was far and few between that I wouldn't stop at each one and change at least something just to stay fresh. Sir, I found something. It, um... <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if Palpatine cheaped out of the droid armor to make sure his Jedi killers were up to snuff because these guys are so silly. Yes, mom! Commando droids. I remember when I was like eight years old and saw them in Rookies for the first time, and for once, kind of intimidated by the droids. Loved using their Viber Sword in Battlefront 2 and trying to duel a hero. Neat. With Kobo being a main world to explore, everything we unlock later has been taken into account. Like here, once we get the dash, it'll measure out perfectly to cross. Everywhere. Fix the PC version of the Space Cow Gets It respawn. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Another sandy looking planet to explore. Yeah, we had some uh, technical problems. Respawn, probably. Woo, it's purple. I want to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> what the f is that? He's so ugly. I love him. Yes. <laughs> it was all just a. Oh, you know you done fucked up when Cal gives you the darkest stare. Let him go. Holding his belt like that. Looks like we got a new sheriff in town. Who'd win? Arthur or Cal? My money's on Cal. All he's got to do is wait. Another example of setting up an enemy type as a boss to later make them regular ones, just to make us feel more powerful. A trick from software employees all the time. Copy and paste Taurus demons, anyone? Next time you want to pick a fight, you go through us. <laughs> Cal never wanted to forget his ride or die. Noble Jedi Knight, if you stay your hand, I shall withdraw in peace. Preying on Cal's honor as a Jedi. This was the first step to kind of endearing me to Revis, who Haiki had a much more interesting character than Dagon, which I don't think is a bad thing considering his role in the story. More on him once we dry him off. What Star Wars is all about? Constant weird ass aliens. Only way we survive is by sticking together. That's right. You didn't have to step in just now, but you did. Yes, you did. Turgle, <laughs> shut it. <laughs> Need to even say anything? Ah, potential customer. One lippy. Nothing. Thanks. Oh, well, that's a mistake. Spoken like a true salesman. Or alcoholic. Pick your poison. Glad they went the traditional aging wrap for Grease instead of grabbing the clippers. Man's looking fly as hell with those braids. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. How you doing, BD? Ah. Wait a minute. 
if that doesn't show you how close of a crew they were at the time, then I don't know what does. It's second nature to him to be around BD in the group. Just get over here, you son of a bogling! Son of a bogling, dang Farrick, son of a gun dark. I don't think the cursing of Star Wars would ever not be cringy, but I do commend the actors for still giving everything they got with the silliness. Yeah, sure, whatever you need. Come on, grab some seat. And Grease was to have a catchphrase. It's not greasy money. Woo, he said it. Me, you, the space witch. Seer? <laughs> Still can't bring himself to call her Marin. The galaxy can wait a couple hours. Well, we should probably get moving as soon as we finish up. It's a nice small storyline that Cal wrestles with, having so much weight on his shoulders, never taking a second for himself, especially after the crew broke up. The only thing he has left is the fight. And as he reconnects with everyone, each of them have some wisdom about possibly just living a life, moving on. He survived. Maybe he earned a simple life with Marin, but not Cal. I understand his hunger to make a difference. We are the same age after all. My old scrapper outfit. Why did Grease keep this? I know. Creepy. You think creepy, I think endearing. I was hoping you'd stop by and maybe take a break. We both know what happens when I stay in one place too long. Talk about sweeping one's trauma underneath a rug. And something that we're gonna see happen once again with the archive. The walking away isn't an option for me. I have to hold the line. Hold the line or toe the line? One's out of a true desire and the other is out of obligation. And for Cal now, I believe it's the latter and it's been taking a toll on him. What does their sacrifice mean if I go and I just give up and stick my head in the sand? He's right. Let's stay as far away from Tatooine as we can. You gotta take it from me. Somebody who had to learn the hard way. You gotta know when to walk away from a rigged game. Otherwise, you are gonna end up losing something you could never replace. Laying out how he lost his hand while being thematically poignant. Grease, you dirty hairball. BD with the camera white to make the asset disappear without any weirdness. <laughs> BD's such a freaking cat sometimes. Gosh. You're not even very good from the rooms. I'm more of a poncho guy. <laughs> yes, you are. Now, where's the pink poncho? I do take back a bit of what I said. We monkey brains like getting our exploration rewarded with something tangible to gameplay, and perks do just the trick for that. Some of them in combination can really shake up your playstyle and add some zest to a combat system that is in dire need of some spices. The last time I stood here. Wow, if Z never pointed it out, I wouldn't have noticed. That's pretty neat. Another one? Cal? You have a very bad habit of picking up strays. BD1, Marin, Bone, Z, the entire crew that died on Coruscant? Yeah, it tracks. It's an old prospector's legend about a lost world filled with treasure. I mean, I might not be the treasure they were talking about, but Taylor does harbor something more valuable than prior right shards. Next to Seer, he's the best marksman I've ever met. Hmm, I wonder why that may be. Wonder if there is something else aiding his shot. Hmm. You can wash your hands. Game of the year, people. I didn't think the customization was going to be as extensive as it is and have it drastically change the energy that Cal gives off at a cutscene. Do you want to look like you're a country stand-up comic, a husband with a drinking problem, or a sexy fallen Jedi that took playtime a little too seriously? The galaxy's yours. I'm Cal. This is BD-1. Listen, the Empire is not going to be happy to find you out here. We even got some side quests. Survivor definitely took the feedback and the success of games like God of War to heart with its semi-open world structure, which you all know makes for my favorite type of game. My god, these things. They just had to put in a more annoying version of the Felak. You know what I'm talking about. Those stupid rams. Consistency on having your own version of Dark Souls rats and dogs, but f*** you. Respawn always gives us some easy fodder to just have a bit of fun with during platform sections. At least this would have been fun if I didn't forget about the whole block to reflect constantly for the entire game. I didn't do it once after they taught me. Also, the side flip is sexy as hell every time. Cal, you can't fight your way out of some situations. We once again have flashbacks of Cal remembering Seer's teachings when he needs them most, just as the first game with Yarrow. It's not as cool the second time around, but it gets the job done quickly introducing new mechanics. And hey, Cal seems to have a bit of a hard on cutting himself off from the force after enduring trauma. Something I think we all can actually relate to. We tend to repress memories and things that remind us of the pain in the past. They've been in there for hours. Council members are not known for their hasty judgment. You sure about that? We must move quickly if the Jedi Order is to survive. Trust them to do the right thing. The moment she says to trust the council, the glow of light fades real quick. When has trusting the council ever led to anything good? Oh, wait, it's about to show us that, and that's, oh, haha. <laughs> or more so since this is Dagon's memory. It's the moment he feels great doubt in them, and the light extinguishes. Oh, wait, yeah, no, there they are, yeah. Ooh, a little yellow saber, generally used by Jedi Sentinels who, in their teachings, would try to straddle the line between diplomacy and fighting ability, illustrating Dagon's struggle with that balance, ultimately succumbing to the latter. 
You're not here. Scary! Dagon really exists a hold a mirror up to Cal. To not get lost in the sauce, so to speak, as Dagon had lost himself in the pursuit of Tantalor, Cal was on the verge of such with the Empire. Oh yeah. I bet the guy in the back of tank, missing a limb, upset with the council, and breathing like Vader, is totally gonna be an ally. You are a Jedi? Yes. That cheeky little smile, eating it up, that real recognized real. Turn it into an empire. I want Dolly Zoom to be more than just a technique to illustrate a character going through some revelation, but I can't bash it too much because it's possibly my favorite trick in the book. Oh, the pulsing of the music, ratcheting the tension on what color it may be when he ignites it to the positive release as we see it's still yellow. It was my discovery, my home, and they just expected me to throw it away. Wow, watching someone bleed a crystal is something I've never seen on screen before. <laughs> this is for all you haters that said bleeding crystals wasn't canon. Hearing the anger and suffering that pushed him to this point gives him a sympathetic reason to turn to the dark side. The council failed him, his powers failed him, the Republic is gone. There's nowhere left to turn to but himself to make things right. I really don't blame the guy. <laughs> I guess if Vader could still use the Force, then sure, of course a little stump would be enough. Let's not forget, Dago is right-handed, just came out of his bad spa day, and is missing an arm, and still puts up a fight against Cal. Either he was super skilled or that the dark side is truly fueling him. I am not your enemy. The enemy is out there, and they are very powerful. A classic. When you've seen so many different stories, they really do just bleed together in your head. Could they have just shown him jumping? Yeah, or they could have just placed him on the ship like they did. Make it a little scarier that, oh, how did he get there so fast? And save him some animation work. This game was made in a blazing fast three years right as COVID hit. Even less time than the first game under worse circumstances with a relentless publisher. Sometimes little things like this that are kind of awkward are necessary. Or am I thinking about it too hard? What's new? Oh yeah, the Republic got ship. The Raiders truly are living up their scrappy and hungry ways of funding their military. Ah yes, Cal, the benevolent Jedi who uses his space wizard powers to mind control animals to love him, just to ride them violently into dangerous situations. Actually, when you put it like that, it sounds exactly like how a Jedi would act. Anakin would be proud. We must persevere, Cal. After all, what else is there to do? Cal solemnly agrees with Z, where for all their advancements, don't feel the same emotional capacity as a human. Kind of indirectly saying that Cal still has a lifelessness about him, a programmed path that he can't diverge from. It does sound like a place that someone could call home. Get your feet down. It seems that like Gris' neuroticism gets disarmed when he feels at home. It reminds me of myself when I learned that not everything has to be perfect to be comfortable in a home. In my home. A lesson my lady taught me. All right, I'm gonna make it some food before we go. Grease in his food. With how much they bring it up, he better get a dish at Galaxy's Edge. So much detail in all the components for something that we can barely notice in actual gameplay. Respawn knows how important it is to us to make this puppy ours. Well, they give me the creeps. I wonder what kind of weirdo- Huh, yes, among the best arrangements of these games. Sears freaking theme. It makes me realize I didn't win that cow literally plays her theme when he touches the guitar in the first game. Talk about a force echo. The skills in Survivor are, of course, expanded upon from Fallen Order, but all really fall to the wayside as it's more often than not more effective to just use the base attacks. This is to say anything about how fun some of these abilities are, though. It reminds me of the phrase that gamers will optimize the fun out of a game, which I try my best to avoid, but look at me. Like the little overhead flip with the double blade or the flurry attack at the dual slavers, there were points I'd stop tryharding as much and Start going for flair, and man, that was actually kind of enjoyable. Kind of like how I get in my own way dancing too much during Synth Riders. They fly now! Talk about an entrance, giving the Dorma Lage a run for their money. Cow's lightsaber's burning so bright right now. Unless. Unless what, cow? What the f? is that feel like it's gonna stick bug me or something huh you can heal on the walls and bd cutely sticks us oh i love them they added this member bit but don't let us slice bodies in half F cowards i'll meet you on the other side but that is not the way to see your face just want to check it out real quick if i love doing anything it's winning the same things across all games allies pointing out our gamer tendencies won't get old for me anytime soon tell me why the scryton is harder than darth vader or better yet spawn of ogdo is harder than darth Vader? Why did we have to meme it, friends? Why? If the Emperor knew what was good for him, he should have thrown f***ing Ogdo in some fire and given him the Santa Maria armor. 
Or better yet, in episode 9, Leto Atreides should have said somehow, Ogdo Bogdo has returned. Help me out. Must I? <laughs> Marion flirting like in second grade. You want a hand? Thank you. <laughs> but I can manage. The YouTube incels are fuming at their monitors right now. I can hear them now. <laughs> I love it. It will warm you, keep you company on dark, lonesome nights, yes? But left unchecked, it will consume everything in its path until there is only ash. But on a cold night, like tonight, a warm fire is perfect. And the company is not so bad either. This is actually just a metaphor about Cal being a redhead. Seriously though, that's kind of the thesis of this game. Unchecked desire is a path of destruction, and we need to keep people close to temper our worst instincts. Dagon with Tantalor, Seer with the Archive, Bode with his daughter saved you, Vader with destroying everything about his past act like it didn't exist, and Cal with his guilt to continue the fight. And I do believe that the company's not so bad either. is isn't just Bathos, but it's important as well. The fire is necessary, but what everyone needs is people to share it with. And Marin laid on thick with Cal's cute. I had to leave Cal in order to see the galaxy on my own terms. What'd you find? Myself. Man, does that one hit. Don't care how cheesy it sounds, it's f***ing true. I had to go through a very similar thing, believing that I couldn't see the life I wanted shackled to somebody else. And even if it's a mistake, like the crew discovers throughout Survivor, better to have loved and lived than loved and suffered. Reminds me of why the Jedi seem destined to fail alongside the Sith, both too black and white for their own good, and why we'll always have stories to tell in this universe. Stories aren't about who wins in the end. We know what happens to the Empire and the Jedi, but what happens to the Manus crew? How do they get on in this life? What can we learn from their struggles? It's something that makes gaming so much fun today because we get to vicariously live these stories. And even better, we don't experience stories passed down through generations around a campfire anymore. They're cooked up every day, and we get to learn so much about the real world struggle through the creation of this art. Why did the game run so poorly? How did the team at Respawn react to 2020 compared to the rest of us? When we think about the people behind these games, we could draw even greater parallels to our own lives and move forward with greater relatability. Psh, I just blacked out for a second. What's happening? Oh yeah, Cal trying to get his d wet. It's clear you made the right choice. To cap off this wonderful scene, we got Sears theme coming in. The woman that is kind of responsible for them coming together. Hello, my friend. Well, that was an expectation subversion if I've ever seen one. I might just be dense, but I swear that he was positive to be dead. Ultimately, that failure inspired me to seek out other Jedi survivors. Yo, again? Cool. Getting a dummy beats the hell out of me going and get my ass kicked in the meditation trainings, practicing new moves. So for non-force users, do they just like, roll it over there? Unless it has to be a certain velocity, then hell yeah, this is a dope ass law for the Jedi. Welcome to Jedi. You either grow it or you lose it to show age. Sears said, fuck it, I'm a full shave. I mean, sin. Hunted by the Empire, like, like Jedi survivors? What are we, some kind of Jedi survivors? Why didn't you tell me? You never asked. Phone works both ways, biatch! And then they just listen to the propaganda and they pretend they're free anyways. Hmm. Yeah. You chose a hard path. And it hasn't made a difference. You can just feel the energy between these two. Performance capture is the sh**. It's no longer student and teacher, but two grizzled survivors giving each other their just respect. And there was a time when I remember that the Jedi were more than just weapons something that i think that the possible third game is going to try and introduce judging by the end of the game and it being kind of cow's arc throughout this one the master always frowned upon using blasters you once said it wasn't the weapon that makes you a jedi hee <laughs> cheeky callback Marin. i'm loving the way cows and assorts rewriting what it means to be a jedi those scrapper days really paying off for cow if he can fashion a holster this quickly Okay, maybe now Cal can give Arthur a run for his money without using the clock. Survivor continues to add more tools to spice up traversal. Respawn really took action adventure to heart, leaning more on adventure it feels in this game more than the previous, which you're either going to love or hate. After about the 500th wall run, I was kind of ready for a bit more saber combat, but maybe I've just got a short attention span. 
With that said, compared to the first game, this offers us a more swashbuckling adventure, not completely riddled with grief and betrayal and all that. I mean, it's there, but there are swaths of this game that are just plain dumb fun, like this entire research on Kobo. We get a range stance, and what's the first story boss thrown on us? A they fly now. It's something as a DM I'm trying to get better at in my games. Give players opportunities to use the cool things you give them. Which, by the way, nice touch, love a big entrance. Me too. Is it just me? <laughs> I don't think so. She's no Twi'lek, but the Aussie accent for Nautilans could be an awesome new trait like French for the Twi'lek. I mean, they literally come from down under. But also, she's a hunter collector. Steve Irwin would be proud of the representation. Help you get a jump on those hunters. Anyone else's brains get violently taken back to Amiga and the Bad Batch on Hunters. Oh, I love that BD plays a much more active role in gameplay. Where is the BD one-off Ashley missions? Oh, respawn! For the abyss. It is unbecoming to gossip and to eavesdrop. You hear that, Critters? That's her dad speaking. Those who don't know, that's Matt Mercer from Critical Role, and he's the best. Speaking of that, this is a stacked freaking cast. Even past the named characters, there's so many other bangers just coming in for voice work. Liam O'Brien, Sam Regal, Yuri Lothenwall, freaking Sam Witwer. Not surprised in that last one. Dude can't keep his fingers out of Star Wars. Dagon is arming raiders with lightsabers. Yeah, he is the absolute perfect excuse to give us more saber fights all over for bosses and the like. What was that? We're almost there. Local say the moon's haunted. What do you think, Droll is there too? This ain't Diego. See what I mean about scale? These are the kind of environments we'd love to see out of the AAA. <laughs> Steven Barton and Gordon Hobb absolutely brought it with the score they crafted here, just as with the first game, creating a soundscape that is undeniably Star Wars while still managing to stand on its own two feet. How y'all like my hermit looking cow? I enjoyed it. What did you guys land on with your favorite gear by the end? The blaster stance was something I think we all wanted when we saw Seer cracking fools with her in a hallway scene. Being able to weave in blaster shots almost does a better job at cleaning up the trash mobs than the double blade while maintaining better dueling control. And lets us deal with those pesky flyers. Made better that Cal forgoes his sword that can literally cut through metal just so he can pistol whip it. Speaking of that, that's a great VR game. Try it out. Respawn gave us just about every main Separatist droid in the book, which was a great choice as more Empire girlies would have gotten a bit stale after a while. Maybe it's their boring armor compared to the clones. I don't know. But the droids were constantly more fun to fight. Bonus points that I totally thought the fight was done after the decapitation and got sauced on. Okay, maybe we're evolving backwards in the AAA. This is an exact platforming encounter in God of War 2 when we're climbing around on Atlas. Come on now. Or it's an homage to Santa Monica's amazing game design. Oh, respawn, how respectful. Of course. That's what I was gonna say. Of course a Star Wars game's gotta throw in a trash compactor. Target is a coward. That's right. Respawn never misses the opportunity to let us pummel the bad guys. I'll give Survivor this once again, doing from software's pioneer design better than them. The distance between meditation points is just perfect. If you noticed the last little bit, I've been scraping by on no stems and was biting my nails, fighting for my life, praying for the relief of a meditation point. Something that I believe was sorely missed in Elden Ring. That feeling of being too far away from home, but forged too far forward to turn back. It put me in this ultra instinct type mode. Whatever's ahead, they really don't want us getting to it. Cal, you're so astute. This might be only the fifth time you've mentioned it this mission. Freaking brilliant. The one stance I didn't see coming. Oh, and Respawn did some research. This is how you properly hold a blade of this kind when approaching a combat encounter. The crossguard saber rounds out our stances and brings the greatsword, if you will, to Cal. Monster Hunter fans, that's for you. Between all these stances, everyone is sure to find one they prefer. We've got the balanced, one for crowd control, complete offensive damage, a ranged approach, and the hard reads hard damage. Skillet put it perfectly that the thing that's really holding back this combat system from really shining is that we're limited to two stances and that there is no combos that link the stances to seamlessly transition between them all. If Respawn is to make a third, I think this will be the evolution that completely revitalizes the combat. The options at that point would be endless on how we string together combos and gives us more decisions than the fly about how to tackle the ever-changing environment and fight. Both have been damaged by the lightsabers. Was it me? This time. <laughs> Cameron Monaghan's performance, so quick to defend himself, reminds us that he still is so young in this adventure. And just like all over, I never really knew until Fallen Order that this man I share a name with was such a baller actor. I really need to watch Gotham just to see his Joker after only knowing him as the Jedi survivor and my favorite Gallagher and Shameless. Empire brought a new toy. And I thought the Magna Guards were bad. These dudes put me in the dirt and I was happy to see more Imperial variety. Choose your direction and act with certainty. 
and trust that whatever the odds, you'll pull through. I'll give these flashbacks this. They aren't direct Jedi training from Seer like with Yaro. It's her just basic ass human advice to Cal, and it's that which he uses to overcome and teach himself these new techniques. So you basically told him to full send, and he's like, I right, and shit that it worked. The desk makes everything feel so much better too, especially just getting around on foot. As a content creator, we are always looking for little time savers here and there, and movement tech over large distances is always the first one we look for. God damn, they're really just bringing back everything for the Clone Wars era. Bringing it in the last place we'd expect to see it too. Plus, it's freaking huge. Way bigger than the ones we see in the Arc Troopers Clone Wars episode. <laughs> Bringing in a Clone Wars DC-17 blaster, too. I'm sorry, but I grew up in the prequel era. Anything from it makes me happier than Grogu playing with a ball. I mean, just look at the Clone Wars skirt I'm wearing right now. S-C-A-L-E. This octopusy is horror levels of big. I get why this wasn't a traditional boss. I mean, how do you fight this thing with a lightsaber without making it gimmicky as all hell? Making it a platforming boss was for sure the way to go, and something we haven't had to face yet in these games. Oh, nice. She's going to Dr. Strange inside of this bitch. Okay, yeah, nope. That works, too, though. Do you trust me? Yes. We all knew it was going to happen, and Respawn hasn't been one to not give the fans what they want. Also, BD totally just standing there like... Nowhere left to run! And we stand together. This is the high fantasy that everyone wants. Standing against the odds with your partner, ready to be badass with them. It's the kind of silly things you daydream about when in school or going to bed. And how cute it takes them putting their powers together to overcome all odds. It's a big one. Right behind you. <laughs> Marriage has jumped off the same way PlayStation Miles Morales does. Getting spit out in front of a spooky looking sorcerer while using spooky witch magic. I do made it back in one piece. Am I the only one that loves the video game sound of palms slapping on things? I mentioned it in my Fallen Order video too. Just so satisfying. You must have stolen a compass. Don't worry, we won't be so careless. Ha! <laughs> what a snake! Literally priming their guards to be lowered around him. Boat smart and plays the long game. You might notice that a lot of these cutscenes happen in not quite oneers, but long continuous shots when it involves multiple actors. I love it as this moves the actors closer to a theater performance where they just get to live in the space and play off each other, then get their performances chopped up to pieces in the editing. I'd ask you to stay and help us, but I recognize that look. Well, look. I think I'm so jaded by the MCU and really Disney comedy to even be winning this, but Cal doesn't go for the easy joke. What look? I have a look, all confused and quippy, but we've got a story that's taken a bit seriously and I appreciate it. So you coming with us? I mean, Breeze can make room on the Mantis for all of you. No. Huh. Getting the crew together near the end of the second act of this game would be the perfect expected thing to do and Respawn bucks that. Seer being absent gives Cal the room he needs to truly be a leader and make his own choices. You know? The Mantis could really use some elevator music when in hyperspace. See? They took her, Cal! Carried her right out! She's been droid-napped! Turgle feels right out of a Saturday morning cartoon, and I love it. I think you two can manage. Just don't let him swim without supervision. Out of pocket callback, Marin! All right. I'll scout ahead. Bitch, what? If they don't give us a jetpack in two more frames in the third game, I want my money back! This is a sequel done right. Every little bit of the game has been expanded upon. All the criticisms of the first have been addressed. It's seriously bigger and better in every way, bar the story. Long way to say that we got fast travel now, which wasn't added because we complained too much about it, but because the level design actually allowed for it this time. If you remember each time you'd visit a planet, there were specific routes to return to the Mantis that opened up new areas with its own story beats. The entire arena capture on Zepho couldn't happen if there was fast travel. You made it. Anyone spot you? Me? <laughs> Not a chance. The confidence! This will probably be the closest we get to setting foot in the Death Star that we'll experience with Cal. When you're ready, make a move on that gantry. I'll be watching. Copy that. Why is he so cool? That's one way not to get mud on your boots, huh? And that, friends, is why I love the blaster stance. Get him back. You see that bullshit? Hiding enemies around corners? That's just like from the software. In Survivor, you're going to find these random spikes in difficulty. This and the Imp Post 8L are the two that got my ass. Oh, and the other. The brown wampa things, yeah. They're gonna come out of nowhere when you're feeling the most confident and humble the shit out of you. Oh man, I know these halls like no other. The moment I ran into them, my nostalgia was beaming, similar to the Venator flashback feeling in the first game. If only we had some super speed to get out of this one. First time I fought Droidica was with my master during the Clone Wars. I froze. He had to take them out. Look at you now. 
Bet he'd be proud. Little moments like this is what makes Bode's betrayal the ending so much. He really was our bud. I don't think he was ever faking it for a second. I don't know what the audio team is doing at Respawn, but keep doing it. Hearing explosions and Cal's lightsaber ripping through the metal has such a satisfyingly punchy bass that I feel in my chest. Roger, 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 roger. As a fellow Blanc main and FromSoft and Monster Hunter games, I gotta give them my respect. <laughs> Resourcefulness. Have I mentioned our companions helping us in a fight? It's not as in your face as Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's a nice little boost in combat, especially when they're throwing the entire kitchen sink at Blink and you won't hear it. There is an ever so slight hint of the Separatist theme at the start of this fight. Take a listen. Yeah, I've heard Jedi avoid attachment, but that's right. Wow, this look from Cal. He only says two words, but you can see in his eyes thousands coming through and how important his honor to the Jedi is. Hey, Clankers, over here. I'm sorry, but anyone other than D. Bradley Baker saying that sounds so goofy and forced. He made that slang his and his alone. Yeah, because we aren't being led into a trap or anything. We know what's coming, and there's some form of dramatic irony happening here. <laughs> Well, okay. Guess his boss fight is gonna be interesting. You're a bull, Grievous reference. And again, like when Obi-Wan cut off his hand in the same fight. <laughs> BD just said, nope, it's not time for the boss fight yet. All those years of incarceration dull your edge. Sharp enough to see the Jedi might be your equal. Say it again and I'll cut out your tongue. It'll grow back. In 10 seconds flat, Revis became my favorite villain in this game. <laughs> that little smile they share. I like that Dagon kicks the trend of punishing his subordinates and that they're chums. There are many wars, but little honor to be won from them. Here as well, run me over the Ravis. He's not a bad dude per se. He's got a code that he sticks to. Has no knowledge of the compass. I will tear it down to the bolts and reprogram it to serve me as it once served her. Dagon pulling a Vader and trying to erase the past in his own image. And as a final f*** you decree. That droid is mine. I suppose I'll rescue myself. Z reading between the lines. Also shows the fear she harbors towards Dagon. I struck down those who stood against me. Leave us or share their fate. Huh. Gives Cal a chance to flee. Maybe there's a bit in there of his Jedi self, hence Cal trying to reach him. I totally love the idea that Cal uses the Force to sense different futures at meditation points. Us dying are all the different ways Cal sees himself failing. It's the one time we do succeed that is when the real Cal was finally ready to face what has come and overcame it. Using the Force to wield your second lightsaber. Guess you gotta play the hand you're dealt. <laughs> Two warriors at the height of their powers bound in brotherhood. This is the of legends. Oh god, is Z insinuating that this game isn't canon? I hate these things. I was hoping for the trauma callback, or some least reference. And closest Kyle will ever get to the Death Star laser. Then I must go it alone. <laughs> Dagon just pushed her out of the way to get the MacGuffin, and Kree cut off his arm. I would've turned the dark side too. Losing an arm to a friend does that to people. Get a medical droid in here and prepare a back to tank. And that's the last thing he remembers coming out of the back though. Then learns all of the Jedi are gone and it's been centuries since his incarceration. All he has left is his dream for Tantalor. Nothing and no one else. I don't think his character goes as far as sympathetic, but it's damn close. Why did you activate the- I heard you. Long ago, Dagon bested me in combat. Earned my loyalty. Dude is just a living Darksaber, all right? Without a code. You can only serve yourself. This gives Cal pause as he looks at his code and tries once again for a third time to live by the Jedi code, not resorting to violence and trying to be diplomatic. Though the music teases that Cal would certainly like to ignite and fight. If you want that knowledge from me, you're gonna have to fight for it. Very well. Ugh, that dejected very well. I know he won't since he wasn't given an Oscar moment in Survivor, but the man deserves some awards. You wanna play dirty? Let's play dirty. Cal, probably, after seeing the gun. I defeated you. Fight with me. 
We can take on Dagon together. Cal is a model Jedi. And this got me so excited, imagining him squeezing onto the Mantis. No! Cal pauses a moment, giving respect and honor to Ravis. Love characters who got a code and stick to it like this. This is just dumb fun and a quick way to get back to the Mantis. They didn't have to do this. Could have just given us a fast travel point and been done with it. Yeah, I think so. Say, uh, jetpack, give me a hand up here. Yeah. Grease can read a room. I just don't understand why she didn't see the change in him before it was too late. I think Cal isn't seeing the whole picture clearly here. Kree did see the change in Dagon, but she didn't take the necessary steps to guide him back to the path in a constructive way, instead wrenching control away from him, forcing him into a corner where he felt he had no way out. If you ever stray from your path, we will guide you back. And that's the takeaway here. This echoes what Marin said around the fire in Jeddah. It's those around us that keep us honest to who we truly are. I already showed you my authorization. You already showed me your authorization. A whole encounter many might miss just by blitzing through the gate. And there it is, babies. The best drip that Cal has. Love the little lore tidbits you could find on all the gear. This is very obviously Anakin's garb, expertly named Exile. This mother Imperial Post is like the Ogdo Bogdo in Imperial Fights. This is straight up just World War I, a battle of attrition, and I actually really enjoyed it for how much it kicked my ass. I feel like I keep saying this about this game. Do I really like the gameplay, or am I just a masochist? Well, I do choose to do YouTube as a full-time job, so probably the latter. This is an inspection. You have orders to let me pass. <laughs> Placing the security droid there to give us anxiety on our mind trick working. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Rick the Door Technician? No. I thought not. It's not a story the stormtroopers would tell you. It's an imperial farce. Rick the Door Technician was a lord of the door so powerful, so wise, he could use his brain to influence the electronic circuits to create doors. He had such a knowledge of the circuits, he could even keep the doors he cared about from closing. This has got to be a nod to either SNL when Adam Driver played Matt the Radar Technician or the Boss Soldier of Godric fight in Elden Ring. And my god, what a boss fight to come after the onslaught that was the hangar. Like, seriously, this one was rough on my body as I was laughing way too hard. And I just had to stop and disrespect this man as hard as I could. Gotta admire his spirit, though, and thank you for giving him the boss defeated logo respawn. Just mwah, 10 out of 10. I didn't have to take a moment to myself. Respawn knew I was gonna want to see this one. For those who found the traversal a little tiresome like myself, the summit level was truly what all these different abilities were culminating to. Using Cal's Jedi abilities and scrapper knowledge, we're able to keep up with jetpacks and spaceships thousands of meters up in the air. And talk about a breath of fresh air. Literally. Going from the bog of the Expanse and the dank of the Lucre Hulk. This is drop-dead gorgeous. Star Wars gave us a little taste of everything we expect out of Star Wars environments. A jungle, a swampy mess, space stations, sand, and now our best pin esque city in the clouds. Variety is not something Survivor lacks. Plus, we get to third party these fools harder than a bald wraith in Apex. There's a sense of finality to this mission, and with a lesser game, this would have been the climax. Taking down Dagon and Cal, reinforcing himself to not fall victim to the same trappings as him. But nope, Respawn pulls one over on us. Talk about feeling like a Jedi from the Clone Wars, being able to just tear through these droids like Anakin tearing through Padme's heart. Notice Bode and Cal slowly inching themselves to surround Dagon. <laughs> Teamwork! And Cal look as sexy as f**k while doing it. This is more creepy than intimidating. The dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities. Oh no, I think I've seen this one before. Willingly. I really bet they thought about having this section of the fight leave the camera upside down. But I'm sure for Dagon's final fight, keeping gimmicks out prevailed. <laughs> Nothing more satisfying in this game than grabbing victory from the jaws of defeat. And thank you, Respawn, for having these battles incorporate a ton of force in the midst of the blade combat. How does it feel to know that you're about to die? Does anyone really die when they're in the Upside Down? Yo, what? I'm only guessing that Dagon used some kind of force ability to bring them into some kind of force demiplane, centered around Dagon's past, hence his force arm, which allowed Cal to use his force echo ability to embody Creed to spit some thematic sh** in Dagon's face before showing him American freedom. Dagon gives Cal many opportunities to live, it doesn't outright go for the fight. And you might notice his saber is more of a red-orange than crimson red. Perhaps he wasn't fully committing to the dark side, and the bleeding of his crystal wasn't complete. Some kind of force hallucination. 
Fueled by fear. I use his against him. Oh, damn. Well, throw my theory out the window. But, uh, like, Dagon was our big bad. And I know we've got a lot more game left. There's still a lot to wrap up. Once Dagon died, I truly had no idea what direction the game was going to go. And it's part of the reason that Dagon did feel a little underdeveloped, as his role in the story wasn't to be the big bad to help Cow with his self-revelation by the end, but to just be a hurdle on the track there. A byproduct of this rug pull is that there is a sour taste in our mouths, as we feel there was a lot of wasted time on his part of the story, as he never really changes the route. It's just Tantalor, Tantalor, Tantalor! With not much nuance. It's the Jedi tragedy already explored better with Anakin, so who really cares about his side of it? This is why I liked Ravis so much. Yes, he doesn't change much either, but it wasn't just blind devotion to his ideals, but stalwart conviction in his principles that you can't help but respect. Principles that made for more interesting interactions with Cal, actually being able to hear reason and speak to him on a human level. Dagon exists for Cal to kill the bad version of himself, which is also a super tried trope in hero stories, to cement that his worst fears won't come to pass, and I just wasn't in love with it. It's a bit too by the books for me, but there's a reason it comes up over and over again, because thematically it still works really well for the story. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Bo looking for his blaster. It's the little things, people. I'm gonna take a look around first. See if I can find a manual for that thing or something. Motherfucker was killing time to steal Dagon's lightsaber. That bitch. I definitely don't invite those creepy sisters of yours. But they're here now, Grease. All around you. I just sense something, Grease. <laughs> I love the cute banter while traveling. And now look at them all, together, on this shared dream. Round of fire. Master T'Pol would be proud of the Jedi you'd become. I had a good teacher. That is the cutest shit. When she sees what you've done for her, she'll understand. I hope so. He really has made up his mind by this point. I was thinking maybe we should go to 10 more first. Make sure it's safe before the others join. This was Bode's one last try to not sell them out. Bode just wants a place that's safe for his daughter, and a fortress on Tantalor for the Hidden Path isn't the answer for him. He fears history repeating itself and losing Tantalor. When you have kids, all your priorities shift, and after the fall, Bode surely isn't going to let his daughter's life be in the hands of anyone else but his. Such an understandable reason for doing what he did that makes me wish we had more time to spend it with him. Mm, the sooner we get the Hidden Path set up there, the better. Gotta stay one step ahead of the Empire, right? Yeah. About that. The order's gone. It's time to leave it behind. I know what I want now. It took you long enough. God, if they aren't the cutest thing ever. Marin waited patiently to allow Cal to discover his feelings on the order on his own, even if she already knew what was best for them. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, and sometimes you just gotta let them be dehydrated for a while. Man, Nashir the Law's performance here, knowing exactly what is coming. This is something I love about doing these videos, is generally we replay the game to see all these little moments in its new context, but I've got the privilege to review my footage and only focus on stuff like this and share it with you guys and just be nerds together. Something I pride myself most on this channel. These aren't video essays. They aren't super intelligent critiques or analyses most of the time. I know I get a little wordy sometimes. All right, all right, give me a break. But just someone who loves games and wants to share my favorite bits about it with all of you. And if you're still watching this point, you're a real one. Oh. I'm really sorry about this. And because it's no sheer, I believe him. <laughs> Seems Bode went to the zombie land school of killing. <laughs> nah, doesn't change much. Thought he was dead anyway. <laughs> Get you a dad like Cal. Doesn't even care about himself at all. Don't hate me for saying this, but for a droid of all things. I know, I know, I kid. I'd do the same thing for Sesame. But also get you a mom like Seer. Ain't nobody beating my child but me. Oh, shit. This is the real deal. I haven't felt fear like this for walkers in a long time. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Something terrible is coming to that archive. Listen to your instincts. A hint that Bode is force sensitive and tries to reason with him on that Jedi level. Also, Vader shadowing. You get them out of there right now. What have you ah! done? Oh, what? You're not the only one who survived. Get it? It's in the time. I don't hate his betrayal. And like I mentioned earlier, don't think he was gonna betray Cal until he got back in with the Jedi. Something that he's long since left behind. Seeing him use blaster stance, I had to honor him and use the blaster he gave us against him. Had to. Stems are locked. We ain't got no BD.
This was weird, like fourth wall break weird. But Cal called out to see her before passing out, and I'm going to say this is some weird force mumbo that connects them and gets his plan as her. But more like Cal's out of commission and we need someone who can hold their own against Vader, so here we go. But we're playing as Seer, it's like the Force Unleashed playing as Vader, but in reverse. It's like poetry. It rhymes. I guess everyone you play as has a goofy run. I f love Ski Ball. Yippee! I'm sure he's fine. He probably just turned off his comm. That's some copium if I've ever heard some. With her. Keep the engines warm, Grease. Won't be long. Seer definitely underestimated how bad I am at this game. You got this. Thank you, Grease. This score kills! BD-1, take this to the Mantis. I'll meet you at the rendezvous point. BD once again has to leave a Jedi Master behind with intel. It's like poetry, it right? Yeah, yeah, I'm dumb and let my guard down and got way too immersed in the story. Totally did not see Vader coming. It's been a while. That cheeky smile. It's both confidence and acceptance of her fate if this is going to be it. And I have come for you. Seer so straight up said, bet, let me just make an arena right quick because I'm the boss battle here. Why Vader look like it's his turn to play on the Xbox though? I've been waiting. I mean, don't forget, he did kill her sister. Oh, he's got a health bar now. This is not a drill. Like any Souls boss, the first time will always be your best run until you finally beat them. Vader was the case for me. Felt so fluid and badass, then got dead and then got mopped. And I loved it every second of it. This was what Vader was feeling the entire time. I just slid my dick down your throat and you thanked me for it. Vader uses a little history of the Jedi to destroy one. That's the raw sh I've ever seen. And then proceeds to duel honorably, not assault her while blocking the books. The more squared off helmet, Revenge of the Sith style will always be my favorite design of his. Now that's just embarrassing. You have grown stronger. No. I've only let go of my fear. We shall see. My guy isn't even breathing heavy. What? But gives her respect if needed to two hand his blade, so go see her for that. This dude cannot for a single second avoid fire ever, can he? Oh, we're f now. Nothing more power than a crispy Vader. Love how Vader is too lazy and makes you come to him. He loves the fight. You waste time. Another photo finished for me and had my booty hole puckered. The fake out. We knew he couldn't die, but like, we were rooting for Seer to like, you know, not. But look at him. I didn't expect Seer to be as powerful as she was. Almost taking down the Dark Lord himself. And he doesn't even honor her with a word. Dude is pissed about how close he came to the end. Seems that Seer held on through the force just long enough to give Cal her last words before passing. The ashes falling like snow upon them is beautiful. It's kind of like saying this world is a little colder without Seer. Cameron Monaghan, give him more material to chew on, Respawn. You paid for the whole actor. Use the whole actor. I love this. He's so good. Nice respect to rapping Cordova like that, but would anyone even notice if he didn't? Like, seriously. Now he's just an awkward pirate that the camera pays no attention to at the end. Talk about salt in the wound. Vader's shadow looms dark over the Mantis right now. If you didn't notice, his theme played. I don't care. It's not the Empire's anymore. It's like how Luke's theme from the OG Star Wars became the de facto Star Wars theme. It's a shame that there's not a bounty on his head. We could have hunted him with a guilt tracker. A guilt tracker? Seems they even know. This wasn't something he wanted to do, but felt he had to. We could catch him there. This feels like a trap. Yeah, it does. So what do you think? Spring the trap. Can I just tug my own string right now? We've got Imperial officers to fight for the first time, and my dumbass really thought, hey, they are a threat, just work it. No need to kill them. And paused. Let it be said that blue lightsabers are still beautiful. Seems everyone swaps off right away because we're so used to it, but not running blue all game to this betrayal and then bringing it back made me feel like such a true Jedi and made the color special for me again. We all know about oversaturation. Something EA can learn about, right? Madden, NHL, 
FIFA, oh, <laughs> too soon. Another thing I'm trying to be better about as a DM is giving interesting arena and terrain for combat encounters. You can only fight so many times in a wide open circle before it gets boring. Dagon one, two, three, Vader, Bode, every single boss fight. Adding even just a ledge opens up combat opportunities. Or obstacles like these Darth Maul walls makes for a much more engaging encounter. Don't think I've mentioned the Saber SFX design. It never gets old. The sound of the sparks, the boomy bass of the Saber slicing and burning, the wounds of the blade wearing. I could almost listen to it to sleep. Not a superhero landing. Cal lands like a straight up villain. And to Denvik, he is. I know what you are capable of and what you are not. What a bet. Cal has lost any to give and is truly ready to rewrite what it means to be a Jedi. A locator beacon on boat ship. Uncharacteristically careless. Almost like he wanted to be found, hmm? Bode has been my weapon for some time. Quite effective. Unlike those armored abominations in the Inquisitorias. The Empire burned the archives, led by Darth Vader. Lord Vader. I have to stop this while I still can! Huh. Now, there's an interesting layer to the Empire I did not expect. There's the Empire, and then Vader and his freak show that still holds onto that dead religion in a way. The Emperor keeps his Sith status under wraps to the general populace, so, you know, he's got a whole different perception. This division could be a cool concept for a DLC or even a whole game playing as an Imperial soldier. The Empire burned the archives, led by Darth Vader. No more. It's him. Cal completely out of to give and isn't fearing him like the boogeyman Vader loves to be. The contrast between the white jacket and Cal's fiery hair is just beautiful. Okay, yes, I got weird about droids hacking droids in the first video, and humans do it in this universe too. Some oversight on my part. You guys are right. Is that what you wanted to hear from me? <laughs> After Bo betrays us, Cal's meditation has grown dark. A uh, not so subtle way of showing us his pull towards the naughty magic side. You don't work here, do you? Kids always see the truth in things. If a kid tells you you're ugly, then I've got some news for you. I can't find my Mookie doll. Uh, yeah. I'll help you find him. Cal's on a revenge assassination mission, but still finds time to help a girl look for her doll. Be like Cal. And aw, it looks like him. Come here, Kata. Bone. Really? Okay. Using your daughter as a shield? It's smart, but the play leaves a bad taste in your mouth. He's our baddie now, after all. Then Vic keeps us hidden. As long as Papa stays useful. Can you blame the guy? Seriously, I can't put it any better than this. Oh, I am He's a man looking for his wife and son. Anybody gets in the way of that's gonna lose. Tanelor was a way out for both of our families. Cow's loyalty to the Jedi Code still blinds him now. This isn't about him. He even mentions the word family and Cal can't understand that a father's love will always outweigh the needs of the many. And even after Bo throws this directly in his face, Cal still cannot see. Get out of my way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is the I win button that we've been craving in these two games. The dark side really is stronger. Leave all the BS about, no, no, it's the easier, pal. Uh-uh. No amount of peace reflection and thinking about violence is bad was going to get me through all these droids. Where's both? They're gone. He took his daughter and the compass. They used me as a distraction. Our dude really did go find a whole another uniform before confronting Cal. My crew. Cordova. Mm. Fear! Mm. They're all dead because of him! Oh yeah, this is the cow I've been waiting to see. Freaking Marin had to be a buzzkill and not let Cal kill him. Let him make a big mistake, you cowards. Imagine if he did kill him. The conversations about it and how it would relate to Cal's arc of leaving behind the Jedi. Let me get this straight. You want me to fly the Manus through a ship-eating nebula using a tiny tunnel carved out by 200-year-old tech? Yes. Yeah. Be this cute little nod. May the force be with you all. <laughs> Catching Cal off guard. Possibly the only person left to wish him this. And with Cal. I'm going down a path I can't follow. It's something he desperately needed to hear. You want to fly this thing? <laughs> Cal. We don't got time for jokes, BD. I'll bet that's what all the other poor saps said right before they were torn into vortex chow. Leave it to Grease to make everything food related. You're trading safety for speed. Exactly. We're all in on you, buddy. Now he's speaking Grease language. You're right. It's my ship, ain't it? Greasy does it, baby. I need to go faster. I'm going as fast as I can. 
No hesitation. Cal just ready to get it done. If you jump into hyperspace blind, they'll be picking up pieces of the man. It's all over the outer rim. Do you trust me? You know I do, Cal. Why did I just tear up? <laughs> Tantalor is beautiful. That is all. If you didn't know, Cal's real superpower is that he isn't claustrophobic. I had to ask my doctor about getting a benzo to be able to stay calm throughout an MRI. Star, hiding in the night. All your friends are oh so bright. When the sky is clear, I can sense you're near. Looking down on this is the most heartbreaking thing I think in the entire game. This is a lullaby Bo and Kata would sing together. The ghost star in the song is her mother. A ghost star is a star that has come to the end of its lifetime, but can still be seen because of the way light travels. To say that she's gone, but her memory lives on. But in the full song, towards the end, they sing they can't see the light anymore. Bo's grief is palpable in the lyrics and shows how much he has lost himself and misses his wife. Your father stole something very important. Where? gonna ask him to give it back. In the Jedi way or the American way? Will you show us the way? Damn, is this girl gonna be blaming herself forever that she got her dad killed? Are we really the heroes? You don't have to be afraid. Yeah, let me just light the hall with my scary ghost magic. You're very pretty. <laughs> At everyone that played Fallen Order. Bringing back that light motif concerning Bode and his wife. Now who expected Bode to be the final boss? Not me, and I'm here for it. You know it's a real fight with hate when it comes down to just fists. Oh, BD gave him pause. <laughs> I wish it was just black for a little longer, but this is still cool. It reminds me of the end of God of War 3. Pulling some big Anakin moves, hurting children and using the force on those you love. Yeah, he bad. It came down to blasters in the end. These men are not Jedi anymore. And poetic justice having it be the one he gave us that ends him. Mmm, force theme. Love me some force theme. It's a cute moment honoring her father, but also heartbreaking as this is the last time Kata will ever have her innocence again, represented through the burning of her doll. This is why stories can still be told though we know the Empire falls, seeing all the different ways they've indirectly and directly destroyed so many lives. This is why buggy launches are bad forever. This moment was kind of ruined for me as I thought the sped up nature was a bug and it took me out of the game completely. Had the game been polished, I would have looked at this as the cool way to pass time they intended and just really feel how long it took Cal to go through the emotions during the funeral. We will continue your legacy, Seer. We will build something that can outlast the Empire. I promise you that, I promise. Notice that he doesn't mention rebuild the order. Cal is far past that now. This isn't about the Jedi anymore for him. It's about people, about survivors. I almost lost myself. I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I'm ready for what comes next. Respawn talking to EA about the third game. Cal, guide her through the darkness. And he leaves Seer's blade behind. He will guide Kata but not the way a Jedi would, and not to be a Jedi. Seer's blade remained as there is no world without the Jedi and the light it brings, but it's left behind as it's time for a new way of living in this world. Jedi Survivor is a game that's dangerously balanced on a tightrope to not be remembered as mid. Fallen Order came out at a time where Star Wars wasn't everyone's favorite thing anymore and breathed new life into it narratively and gameplay wise. It had no microtransactions and was a good length. The stars aligned to make Fallen Order the monster it was. And that's not to discredit the hard work of Respawn. There are more bad Star Wars games than good. But Fallen Order was basically a guaranteed W. Survivor, on the other hand, had really big shoes to fill. 
if it wasn't going to deliver in every department bigger and better, then it will be remembered more as an Assassin's Creed Brotherhood than as a God of War Ragnarok. Not a bad sequel in any way, but Survivor, I think, is severely handicapped by its launch performance and its story. Everywhere else, 100% improvement over the game. I like playing my single player games for a compelling story, and Survivor just didn't hit the same level for me as the first one did. And I think that really comes down to the rush development time and 2020 changing the world. So do we really blame them? I've heard the saying that if this wasn't a Star Wars game, it would have been forgotten in T minus two days. And I'm almost inclined to agree. I'm not trying to be overly negative, I'm sorry. I still really enjoyed my time with the game, but I would be lying if I said I was really hoping for a bit more with Survivor. The way I told my friends is that Jedi Survivor is a seven out of 10 game, but a 10 out of 10 Star Wars experience. And because of that, I still really love it. I get a lightsaber and can force push people off of ledges. I'm good. What did you guys think of Jedi Survivor? Did it meet your expectations or were you hoping to fight Vader as Cal? Let me know down below. And as always, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza.